All right. Well, welcome to our webinar today. We're uh, glad to be here to share some ideas and data on safety with you today and just and hopefully make this interactive and uh, you get something out of it while we get something out of understanding your uh, perspective. Uh, we call this event Looking Forward to Safety because we think it's mostly about important work that will be done in the future uh, for future travelers and generations to come and perhaps where uh, the aviation industry begins to learn from some other industries. But before I get too far ahead, um, I want to make sure that everybody that uh, has connected with us today can hear me. So we're going to conduct a quick poll and get uh, responses and just make sure that we're well connected. Uh, if you wouldn't mind responding to this poll, it gives us a sense of whether or not folks out there can hear and see what we're up to. And once I get the thumbs up from a colleague here, we'll move along. Looks good, looks like we're well connected. Well, I've got a lot of ground to cover today, um, but if you have anybody that you know might want to uh, uh, participate in this but didn't get a chance to, uh, please keep in mind that we'll have a recording of this webinar posted on our website. And as we go, if you have any uh, thoughts that come to you in terms of questions on the material that we're covering, please feel free uh, to post those questions and uh, we might uh, take a chance to answer them as we're going through the material, uh, but certainly we'll uh, get to them as we get to the uh, question and answer period at the very end. Now, um, there's three people uh, that have been uh, pretty routinely involved in the GSIP project, um, either uh, at Flight Safety Foundation or under contract with Flight Safety Foundation. Um, I'm Mark Millam. Uh, I'm with the Flight Safety Foundation. Frank Jackman, uh, who would like to be with us, uh, isn't here just now, uh, but we also have uh, Tim Wilkie here. And so say hi, Tim. Good morning, everyone. So um, that's who's been uh, working on it on this end. Um, in today's agenda, we wanted to uh, cover some things in terms of safety performance monitoring. We'll begin with some introduction, uh, talk a little bit about the background on KPIs and the ICAO Global Aviation Safety Plan. Um, we'll get into how we designed what we have studied on safety performance. We'll talk a little bit about our survey results, and uh, then we'll get into some potential recommendations from us and future activities that we're uh, taking up in order to learn more about this topic. Uh, lastly, we have a question and answer period, um, but as I mentioned earlier, uh, if you've got questions, uh, go ahead and post those anytime uh, you think of them. Um, we wanted to uh, have this webinar so that we can share a little bit of what we're thinking and what we've designed in this project, what we've discovered, and where we think the industry is going and how the Flight Safety Foundation might be able to assist. As we've done in many uh, other webinars that we've conducted, one of the first things we wanna do is know a little bit about our audience. So if you wouldn't mind humoring us with uh, giving us some feedback on a couple of polling questions or a few polling questions before we start, um, please uh, tell us what organization you represent. And uh, then we'll share that back with everybody so that you can see a little bit more about who's in the audience. And so there might be some periods here where I just stop talking while we're waiting for critical mass to have responded to these polling questions. And then as soon as that's there, uh, we'll post it up on the, on the uh, site that you're watching through and uh, you can get uh, a quick response to um, what the rest of the audience has said. All right, looks like it's, uh, it's up. Um, 
We've got a, a heavy uh, mix of airlines, some from other parts of industry, and uh, a little bit from uh, regulator. That's good to know. The second thing we wanted to ask everybody is, how familiar are you with the Global Safety Information Project? We've done uh, a few other webinars. We'll talk a little bit about how we've done uh, focus groups and workshops. Uh, you could be real familiar with this, but you could also be not familiar with it at all. So uh, we welcome any uh, category of those kind of uh, participants today. And uh, if you respond to that, we'll show you uh, who's alongside you in this uh, webinar today. Looks like we're about to post that. All right, uh, about a little over a third, very familiar, um, and a third, uh, somewhat familiar, maybe a little less than a third, this is your first time. Well, great to know that, uh, and thanks for being here again. We are, are glad you're here no matter what your familiarity is. Our last question, just to get started, is, uh, we ran a safety performance survey in 2018, and we really uh, tried to get as many uh, stakeholders to uh, engage with that as possible. We wanna know, did you participate in this 2018 uh, safety performance survey? And uh, whether you participated or not, uh, that's okay. We're gonna cover some of the results from that performance survey. All right, I think we've got most of the responses in and we'll share what it looks like. Looks like most of you have not participated. A few of you have, and maybe some of you have, but just don't remember, and that's okay. I, I know I participated in surveys that I don't remember as well. All right, well, let's give you a little bit of background as we get going with today's webinar. Uh, the Global Safety Information Project is uh, led by the Flight Safety Foundation with support from the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration. And we've worked with uh, a couple of different international civil aviation organizations, geographic regions, namely in Pan America and uh, Asia Pacific. We're doing this one uh, to be able to enable more participation from the Asia Pacific side uh, of the world. And uh, GSIP's aim was to really help uh, encourage effective risk management through um, four specific areas in safety data collection, safety data analytics, safety information uh, sharing and information protection. Um, and while we uh, concentrated on those regions that I talked about, We've done uh, a lot of work in terms of uh, focus group sessions, workshops, conferences, um, engaged with a number of different stakeholders in 15 different countries throughout those regions. Um, but we really haven't excluded others um, because sometimes we run a webinar like this and we wanna expand the reach of uh, GSIP. So uh, if you haven't seen some of our previous webinars, uh, feel free to go to the flightsafety.org uh, website in order to take a look at some of those previous ones. Uh, but this one's gonna uh, focus more on safety performance in our survey. So to get you uh, a little bit more familiar with uh, perhaps where safety performance indicators came from, we wanna talk about key performance indicators. Uh, KPIs um, is, uh, defined as a measurable value that demonstrates how effective a company's achieving business objectives. 
and KPIs are often used to evaluate just how well the company is reaching its targets. Um, and each department might use different KPIs to measure their contributions uh, towards success in the business goals and targets. Uh, and I think it's good to kind of understand uh, how KPIs uh, came to be and how they're being used. And in many ways, they're much of uh, an art form as they are a science. Um, uh, this next slide gives you some examples of what KPIs might be for a small business. It came from a website that was uh, making these subject, uh, suggestions. There's many different companies out there that are giving excellent advice on uh, KPIs. Um, and really, it's a tool to encourage and motivate an organization to do its best, um, not necessarily to meet some minimum standards, but to be as successful as you can. Seldom do you hear somebody in business saying, I just want to break even, um, or I just don't want to fail. So this means exploring what works well, finding the leverage and the controls to succeed and what the company needs to do to stay alert um, in order to avoid. So that leverage is really pretty complex. Uh, if you think of uh, the levers in business, nothing's ever as simple as this switch here. Um, we know it's not that simple. It takes some trial and error. It takes time to study how things work and what's connected uh, in order to th make things more efficient, cheaper, and attractive to your customers. You know, and there's plenty of ways to run a more effective and efficient business, and not every business has the same KPIs. So, uh, I think you'll see when we talk about safety performance indicators, while there are some similarities, um, there really is no magic indicator that tells you how safe you are. There will uh, be some uh, similarities, but none can apply to every aviation operator in the industry. There's also good advice on picking gr good KPIs. Um, you know, sometimes that means uh, objective evidence uh, of progress towards a desired result, um, measuring what's intended to be measured uh, to help inform better decision making, uh, giving comparisons on the gauges uh, of the degree of performance change over time. And sometimes it's uh, covering uh, a variety of different issues, not just uh, how well the company's making money, but uh, where are they uh, efficient, where are they effective, um, quality of product, um, behaviors within the company, uh, as well as the hardcore financials. Um, and often they're balanced between leading and lagging indicators. So when you step back and think about KPIs, uh, to develop some successful KPIs in a business context, you might want to consider how are you competing? What are your strengths and weaknesses? Um, how are your processes set up and where do you need to improve those processes? Uh, and which improvements really will directly affect your bottom line? Um, and lastly, you know, how high should you aim? You know, what are going to be attainable goals? Uh, for the business. So it's really um, quite complex. In some ways, uh, I, I tend to think maybe safety performance indicators are much uh, easier than KPIs for running a business. Um, but often, uh, once those are assembled, there's some work that's done to visualize KPIs. Uh, and what we're showing now is an example from a business that's running a variety of different projects, and they've de depicted uh, what are the good steady results on dial displays at the top of the meeting for critical status on those projects, schedule, alignment, and risk. Um, and below, there's a little bit more information about how uh, resources are allocated against uh, you know, the actuals and the mix of each type of project. And I wanted to point out that dial indicators are sometimes giving us more detail with the uh, green, yellow, and red display bands. These bands will determine whether or not 
performance is better than target, uh, whether it could be still acceptable but needs improvement, and when it's really in jeopardy of making the target. Uh, so to desi design these displays, it takes a little bit more planning and calculation based on the target, based on uh, performance history, and the logic and the timing of what might be left during the given performance period. So we've covered a little bit about uh, KPIs. Uh, we're wondering, uh, as you participate in this, uh, the next polling question we have is, are your safety performance indicator as prominent as your business KPIs in your company? I want you to take a little time to answer that uh, polling question, and then uh, we will move along. During this pause, it gives me a chance to take a little break and a drink. Just water. And once we get full set of replies, now we'll share those results. and see what people's experience has been. Oh, a little bit different than our um, earlier uh, uh, webinar. Um, this one is showing um, fewer folks are saying, yes, they're as prominent as KPIs. Um, some are saying, or a, a big portion of the group is saying, the indicators are more visible. Um, some are saying, well, indicators aren't really a big part of uh, their company or they really don't have good visibility on um, what those, those are or don't know how, they're, they're, how visible they are. So thanks for that. It's good to know what your experience is. Um, as we develop the survey that we're uh, about to tell you more about, we wanted to make sure it was aligned with some other uh, safety activity in the world. And primarily, uh, we were trying to align this with some work that's going on at uh, ICAO, the uh, um, International Civil Aviation Organization and their Global Aviation Safety Plan. Just so happens that they are developing a 2020 to 2022 plan. Uh, most of that plan, um, if you're familiar with it, has been about uh, uh, a, a roadmap for uh, states and service providers uh, to get to improved levels of safety. They're now introducing with this uh, new plan um, to achieve zero fatalities uh, by the year 2030, but they're expanding the role of safety performance monitoring in both state safety programs and in safety management systems uh, run by the industry uh, operators and service providers. So while this is still under consideration and final approval isn't expected till September of 2019, we thought it's a prime time to be reviewing what our practices are and helping to make some recommendations on how to apply them for industry. And all along through our GSIP project, we've been getting some evidence and some feedback uh, that tells us a little bit, both qualitatively and quantitatively, that the community needs uh, safety performance monitoring guidance. Um, we've heard from participants in our, folk, uh, our focus groups, our workshops and webinars, We've also reviewed existing standards and best practices gathered through some of our own uh, other Flight Safety Foundation channels. Um, we now have gathered hard data through this survey we conducted this year, um, and, uh, and we want to share a little bit about that. But as we designed that survey, we recognized some of the work that we had already done in our GSIP toolkits for good data collection and effective analysis. 
And much of the toolkits we recognize that deeper analysis gets to an understanding of potential threats, errors, and hazards. And measuring this along with effectiveness of the barriers to this hazards um, shows us where we may have some uh, weakness uh, that leads to undesired aircraft states and uh, where we have to activate recovery actions to prevent um, some of the resulting bad outcomes. Um, we've learned through that uh, exercise in, in terms of building what we've done in our toolkits that measurements need to be taking place upstream of the outcomes uh, because we're trying to prevent incidents and accidents. But we also have learned that measurements need to take be taken place upstream of the undesired aircraft states because we're also trying to event, uh, pre prevent these precursors from even happening in the first place. Um, now, our ultimate goal and aim is to develop a safety performance monitoring handbook. Uh, this next slide that we're showing you uh, does depict the uh, development process and the steps that we've been taking to get to that performance handbook. Um, the first three steps have been completed um, and uh, we're in the process of conducting some follow-on interviews with uh, survey, survey participants. Uh, but through this survey, we want to understand how the industry views safety performance indicators. Are they business-like objectives against which performance is measured? Do they describe minimum acceptable levels of performance or are they ambitious goals for uh, improvement? Should SPIs be consistent across different operators? Should they be customized for each organization? Uh, or maybe there's a subset of risk categories where standardized metrics make sense. So those are all the things that we were seeking uh, in our uh, efforts to pr pr produce the current survey. Now a little bit more in terms of the details of the current survey. Um, it's an online survey. It was accessible fairly easily, um, covers 57 uh, questions. Um, we think it takes no more than 20 minutes to complete. Um, the data is uh, anonymous, uh, but our target audience was quite broad. And uh, we were uh, you know, asking folks from many different stakeholders covering many different roles uh, to engage with this uh, survey. We've got about 160 responses, and we're about to show you a little bit about what uh, uh, came out of that survey. So uh, this next slide shows you uh, a uh, sort of front page uh, dashboard. This uh, dashboard is, by the way, uh, just posted uh, today on the flightsafety.org uh, website. Uh, we will show you and tell you how to get there by the end of today's webinar. Um, but as you can see in this slide, um, the first part tells us more about um, the demographics of who is participating, you know, what type of stakeholder uh, is it um, that's been engaged, what role does that uh, person play in the organization and what experience does the organization have in the industry. And then we focus on five higher risk categories, generally known to have a history in the long-term accident um, history. And uh, at the bottom of the display, we also wanted to know the role of uh, an active SMS and how the industry interprets uh, safety monitoring uh, terminology. Now, this isn't the only dashboard. Uh, uh, another tab that you can get to goes uh, a little bit deeper. Now we look uh, a, a little bit more into the major risk areas and ask about specific measurements where they set targets, what analysis is conducted, and the data sources that they're using uh, for monitoring. And mind you, this is interactive, so you could uh, uh, select one particular risk category and see the things that are specific to that risk category. And so we did that on the following uh, display. Uh, once you dig a little bit deeper, 
you can see how that looks for something like runway safety. And for this category, you can see that voluntary safety reports are the most prevalent data source. They're followed closely by mandatory reports, and they're basically textual reports of someone's experience and a story about what happened and what could be done about it. Uh, but the data that's used goes on to show that in some cases, more discrete data is being used to monitor performance. Uh, things like FDM and FOQA or ADSB data, ASDX data. Uh, th this is more detailed digital data, uh, even though it's less prevalent uh, in the overall picture of data sources. The analysis methods um, are most of the time looking for causal factors, but also contributory factors. Uh, these analysis methods might really depict the results of discussions and um, contemplation by subject matter experts, and, and they may represent uh, the, the opinions of what may have produced a, a particular event. You'll see some more detailed analysis that's also in this list in terms of bow tie models, fault tree analysis, and fishbone diagrams, but it's less prevalent than the others. And lastly, the performance indicators and targets uh, that are being set include unstable approaches, which is we would call an undesired aircraft state, and followed by excursions and incursions or go arounds, which might be described more as the uh, outcomes, whether they're desired or undesired. Um, as you use the tool on our website, you can explore more um, and see a lot with the interactive capability. So we'll tell you more about that, uh, that link and that location uh, towards the end of our webinar. So uh, here's the kind of key takeaways we wanted to cover with you today. We think there's five. First of all, we think there's uh, inconsistent use of ICAO terminology. There's still some uh, confusion out there. Um, we know that uh, when it comes to safety data and measurements uh, and safety performance indicators, uh, sometimes uh, uh, people see those as the same thing. Um, but uh, we also found that organizations have similar processes for setting and reviewing their targets. It's a good thing. Um, organizations employ common analysis methods. We also think that's a good thing. Um, and there's opportunities, we think, to expand the use of line, line audit data. Um, while uh, causal uh, uh, common analysis methods uh, exist and uh, there are similar pr processes for setting and, and reviewing safety performance targets, um, we, we think there's uh, room to improve uh, both of those things through the use of uh, line audit data. And lastly, there's limited use of um, leading or proactive safety performance indicators. So um, we're gonna walk through each one of these a little bit deeper, maybe show you a little bit of the details of the, the survey itself. Um, in our uh, 2017 survey, we know that uh, the industry was uh, already uh, telling us that there was inconsistent use of uh, ICAO safety performance and monitoring terminology. Um, in this survey, 2018, uh, roughly half of the respondents indicated that the term safety metric and safety performance indicator are perceived to be synonymous. And according to the ICAO definitions, a safety performance indicator is a database parameter that's associated with a performance target. So there's this sort of one-to-one -one, um, uh, association. A safety performance indicator means you got a safety target. Um, and that could be distinguishable from other safety measures where you may be monitoring it, but there isn't a specific target. So for example, uh, the number of landings that are conducted outside a touchdown zone is considered maybe uh, originally a, a safety measurement. Um, and if an organization sets a performance target for that measurement, then it becomes a safety performance indicator per the ICAO definitions. Um, 
but less than half of the respondents indicated that their organization refers to their top priority safety metrics as SPIs. So we thought that was uh, a bit puzzling. We go on, then um, we know that there are uh, a number of organizations that are quite active in terms of setting targets. Um, and uh, in our uh, survey here, most respondents reported the existence of a process for updating employees on the status of their targets. Uh, they also suggested that organizations regularly revisit and revise their safety goals. Um, their practices seem to be in line with ICAO standards and recommended practices on the safety management manual. Um, and you know, once the safety performance indicators and their targets and alerts uh, settings have been defined, uh, ICAO is uh, suggesting that the performance outcome of each indicator should be updated and monitored on a regular basis. So we think the industry is out there picking targets, almost maybe even too eager to uh, uh, pick targets. Uh, we don't know if they're really understanding uh, what they're trying to control. So um, our next uh, takeaway, uh, organizations employing common analysis methods. Um, these are some of the top analysis methods, uh, focusing uh, very heavily on causal and contributory factor analysis, uh, but not too far behind that are uh, uh, other tools such as FDM focus software and safety reporting analysis tools. Um, so we see a mix of uh, detailed analysis along with discrete um, parameters. Um, but uh, in doing this, uh, we'd really like to understand more about uh, how deep some of this analysis goes because some of this information can tell you what is happening with, uh, with an aircraft or your operations, but it isn't telling you why it happened. So uh, causal and contributing factors are good priorities but we'd like to get a little bit deeper in study on how much is this is really driven by expert opinion versus evidential data. Okay, moving on to uh, the next uh, takeaway. We think there's opportunities to expand the use of line audit data. Um, you know, it's used uh, as a data source by less than half the respondents on each of the five uh, risk categories. Um, for near mid-air collisions, loss of control and in-flight, uh, loss of control in-flight and controlled flight into terrain, uh, the percentages uh, were closer to 25%. So we know there's benefits out there in terms of understanding um, line operation safety audits for uh, flight ops, for maintenance, perhaps even for um, uh, ANSPs through uh, the Normal Operations Safety Survey. Um, and uh, in contrast to mandatory and voluntary safety reporting, line audit programs would provide some extensive data on both nominal and off nominal operations. So this just might be the evidential data sources that will help encourage uh, how do you get to those contributing factors um, that might be, most often lead to undesired aircraft states. Now, the last thing we had in terms of a takeaway had to do with uh, limited use of leading or proactive safety performance indicators. And when you think about monitoring safety performance, we always think about it in terms of three categories of analytics that are really common and, and pervasive through uh, any industry. There's descriptive uh, analytics in terms of what has happened, uh, predictive in terms of what could happen, and prescriptive, now that we know both those things, what should we be doing uh, in order to uh, achieve success? So the safety performance indicators um, generally can fall into some of those uh, same uh, categories. 
with lagging indicators really associated with descriptive um, analytics, leading indicators with predictive, and it really takes both leading and lagging indicators along with some additional analysis uh, to get to prescriptive. And uh, you know, we think we've seen uh, limited use of uh, uh, leading or proactive uh, safety indicators. On this next page, we uh, sort of contrast uh, the CFIT near midair collision, um, the top five safety performance targets that were set for, un uh, for um, controlled flight into terrain were unstable approaches, ground proximity warning system alerts, lateral or vertical flight path deviations, nav errors, and minimum safe altitude warning alerts. Each of those indicators is reactive. Um, they indicate undesirable aircraft states that have already taken place. But similarly, uh, the top performance targets for near mid-air collision are also lagging indicators. The TA and RA warnings, altitude deviations, nav errors, and loss of required separations. Uh, on the flip side, between CFIT and, and near mid-air collision, so, there are survey respondents that told us that they're using some leading indicators we would describe as leading indicators um, for um, loss of control. Um, they're showing uh, use of indicating high or, and or low airspeed events, aircraft bank angle exceedances, aircraft pitch angle exceedances. Um, and these metrics we would consider more leading indicators uh, for the uh, loss of control event. Uh, so by tracking these um, undesired outcome precursors, operators might proactively and predictively um, uh, monitor the risk of a loss of control event. Um, so after all of those takeaways, we want to uh, help to build um, some recommendations out of this. Um, as we've mentioned before, the ICAO uh, Safety Management Manual does talk about a database parameter. We think that database parameter was really um, highlighted uh, in order to make sure that uh, there's good control on the quality of data but uh, we would suggest that maybe you don't draw such a hard line as you're looking for good safety performance indicators and good uh, safety data. Collecting new data could be databased in the future. Um, and uh, it might uh, be that your safety performance indicators come from existing and potential new sources as we strive towards more um, leading indicators. Um, so let's bring that down to maybe uh, some uh, more specific examples. Um, uh, in the area of approach and landing accident risk, we've uh, constructed this chart to kind of describe a little bit of what we think uh, are some of the data elements that might be considered as uh, many stakeholders are trying to address uh, what stands out in terms of uh, the risk and what can be measured uh, to tell you the most and, and get focused on um, really preventing the undesired outcomes. Um, and as you look at uh, unstable approaches in the center of this, um, that might be considered uh, the undesired aircraft state, but there's also data upstream of that, um, such as some of the contributing factors um, on the very far left-hand side. And uh, as those are faced, um, they may lead to other uh, events uh, or other precursor conditions that lead to an unstable approach. Um, and then there's a response that's done in, in terms of any developing unstable approach in terms of uh, a possible uh, successful landing uh, in dealing with that unstable approach, or perhaps if it, uh, it, it can't be completely managed, a missed approach. Um, so there are, there are things that can be um, measured in this uh, entire chart uh, that, uh, that help you to 
to really figure out what's the intelligence, what contributing factors are connected to leading indicators. Um, and frankly, uh, we believe this really looks much like a, a bow tie analysis. Um, it doesn't include the actual processes uh, that might be out there for um, barriers to prevent some of these things or recovery mechanisms, uh, but it's uh, it definitely uh, evidential data uh, that can help you in terms of uh, setting good uh, performance indicators. So now that we've covered a lot of our um, survey results, how it's out there, um, what it's tell we think it's telling us and uh, where we think this might lead in terms of uh, new indicators. Um, can you tell us how many of your organization's safety performance targets are leading indicators of safety? That's one poll that we want to do with you. And uh, if you can take some time to, uh, to respond to that. I jokingly said to somebody today, it would be nice while we're doing some of these polling uh, questions that uh, we could fill the uh, blank uh, and silent time with a little bit of uh, music. So I came across some music that maybe I'll play for you here as, uh, as we're waiting. But I think, uh, I think the poll is being responded to. I'll save my music for a little bit later. All right, we're sharing the results now. And in the results, oh, that's interesting. Um, there's at least some out there that are saying all of your uh, safety performance indicators are leading indicators. Um, many are saying uh, that there's a healthy proportion, which, uh, which might go against what we're saying we think we learned. Um, and that might be an interesting discussion to talk about how you view, view what's a leading indicator versus a lagging, lagging indicator. Um, and then there's some that just have very few or, or, or none or don't know. Great, thanks for that. The second poll we wanted to cover with you is, uh, should there be some consistent set of SPIs across all operators in the business? Can you help us a little bit with that poll? Oh, and here's my music, just in case you were wondering what I was thinking about. All right, just keep that in mind that uh, I thought that was funny. And uh, if you don't recognize the tune, um, it comes from a US uh, show called Jeopardy, which, uh, requires contestants to uh, respond uh, to some sort of question and they can win some money. We got no money today, but uh, uh, I thought it was funny to play that. So glad you could humor me. All right. All right, uh, well, this is interesting. Um, most of you think that there'll naturally be some common indicators some of you think there uh, needs to be uh, some uh, perhaps uh, more forceful effort to, to drive those uh, common indicators so, to make good comparisons. Um, and uh, a lot smaller group believes that no, that this is a relationship that's driven by SMS ob objectives and, um, and somebody who doesn't have an opinion, which is okay too. Uh, but we're glad that uh, that people do have uh, some opinions formed and it helps for us to uh, kind of learn through uh, 
folks that are experts in the industry. Hey, I want to keep going. I want to wrap this up to give you some time to cover uh, some questions with us. I see we might have a few questions um, out on the board already. Um, first thing we wanted to mention is that, uh, you know, this came from uh, an effort that we've been doing for a few years now on uh, the GSIP project. It's focused on giving uh, and encouraging effective risk uh, management through good data collection, uh, effective uh, data analysis, information sharing, and information protection. You can find those things uh, on our website. Um, and uh, as we've gone through our survey this year, we think we've learned that uh, it will take a little bit to uh, continue to learn the levers of uh, uh, the safety business, but uh, the maturity on our SPIs will grow. Um, and the industry might not be satisfied with where it stands today. And uh, so there's, uh, there's expected to be some uh, learning in the coming uh, years on this. Um, uh, we have another poll that we'd like to cover with you. Um, we'd like to know in those four areas that we've talked about with our toolkits, um, where do you think your organization would benefit the most uh, in making improvements? Um, so it's very simple. It's just those uh, four areas. If you can uh, help us with this poll and tell us what you think for your organization. I'll refrain from playing my music. Still collecting a few responses, so bear with us. And we'll share that back with you. Huh. This uh, is often surprising for us, uh, you know, depending on the group that we're working with. Um, earlier today, data analysis was really the big hitter. Uh, today, this group really believes that there's more to be gained in information sharing. Um, I wonder if that tells us anything uh, more about uh, a different region of the world. Uh, and uh, information protection uh, seems to be higher than uh, I've ever seen it with other audiences. So uh, interesting note. Um, I want to cover our last few slides uh, fairly quickly. Um, I'll repeat a slide that we had up earlier. Remember, we've gone through this process so that we can get towards uh, putting together a handbook. Um, we, uh, uh, you know, encourage uh, webinars attendees to contact us if they're uh, interested in helping us with this process. Um, and then, you know, we don't want to be just the folks that are out there preaching uh, how you should do business without uh, practicing it ourselves. So uh, one of the activities, future activities that we're currently involved in is called uh, AP Share. It's a data sharing demonstration that's being conducted in Asia Pacific. It really was born out of some interest that came from Singapore uh, and the ICAO uh, Regional Aviation Safety Group uh, in APAC, along with some collaboration uh, with MITRE. And uh, we've got uh, five different countries now that are participating in this. Uh, Singapore, Philippines, Indonesia, uh, Japan, and uh, China 
uh, our newest member. And uh, to date, we've taken on uh, an individual uh, safety uh, topic and uh, done some collection of data and some initial characterization of that. We've uh, broadened that by cross-validating that data and done uh, a final characterization, which led to doing initial mitigation development. And now we're assessing all of that through an effectiveness, applicability, and feasibility assessment on um, those mitigation uh, items. Um, we expect that this will work its way back through the region and the ICAO uh, RASC group, um, but we're also interested in initiating projects that are similar to this in other regions of the world. So we've wrapped up uh, the webinar today. And I did promise that we'd talk to you a little bit about how can you go look and do your own surveillance of our survey. Those are posted on our website. You can go to flightsafety.org, look for the GSIP label right towards the top of our main homepage. And then within the GSIP page, you'll see something on the right-hand side that says additional resources. And the link is safety performance monitoring. If you click on that, you'll get directly uh, to the uh, uh, URL uh, that's at the bottom of this page, and uh, you can uh, can do your own exploring. So uh, let me uh, let me get to some of the questions that might be uh, online and uh, see what we can do. So one of the questions that we've received is: um, Does Flight Safety Foundation have any specific plans to? take the AP share model and expand it to other areas of the world? Uh, we don't have any specific plans right now. We are uh, interested in exploring that. And you, you might also say that if we know that uh, there's an area of the world that has already uh, begun some work like this and uh, is doing uh, some data sharing activity um, and they uh, really want to uh, uh, examine whether or not Flight Safety Foundation could help in that. We'd, we'd love to hear from you. Um, and, uh, you know, we'd, we'd love to, to, to be able to discuss it with you in order to, to know whether or not we could make a project out of it. Um, so good, good question. Uh, another question is wondering if uh, the webinar slides will be available. Um, I think we had the same question on the earlier webinar. Yeah. Um, we don't tend to make the slides from our presentations on the webinar uh, available separately, um, but you can uh, go to our website and we will post the entire webinar um, on uh, our YouTube channel um, and there'll be a link in the GSIP uh, uh, section of our website that can get you to this. Um, and through the YouTube video, you can uh, fast forward and, and see, uh, you know, any section of the, this that you wanted to spend some more time on. All right, I'll give, I'll pause. I'll let if there's any other questions that might be out there, um, we'd uh, love to hear from you. And. Uh, it's okay if we if you think we've given you enough information and maybe you're a little bit saturated for the hour we were with you, that's okay too. Uh, we'd love to have you think about it and maybe come back to us some, uh, some at a later date. Okay. All right. Well, thanks everybody for being part of this. Um, we like to be able to do these things to share some of the activity that we're engaged in and uh, what we think we're learning. Um, and uh, take care. Um, I am headed uh, out uh, after today to go to uh, another one of our meetings with AP uh, Share. Um, and uh, Flight Safety Foundation also has uh, an international aviation safety seminar in Seattle that uh, we're conducting uh, the week after next. Um, so if you have a chance to register for that and uh, come talk with a number of experts that are addressing uh, safety prob problems and issues and uh, have some solutions in mind, uh, keep that in mind. Um, we uh, will have a Singapore 
event with the Singapore Aviation uh, Civil Aviation Authority uh, in March. Uh, so it's a, it's a good idea to keep that in mind as well. All right, so long everybody, have a great day. Uh, if you're on the Far East side of the world, um, here in uh, Alexandria, Virginia, uh, I guess we have to say good night, uh, but we're glad uh, to have you with you uh, with us. And uh, uh, all the best to you and your uh, uh, efforts to uh, improve safety around the world.